welcome back to the channel. We're back at the Cat and Fiddle again. Kawasaki UK have lent us this beautiful Ninja 125. So what we're going to do is we're going to do everything that you people stereotype that you can't do on a 125. So we're going to go touring. We've loaded it up with a tent, sleeping bags, change of clothes, all that kind of stuff. We're going to go and spend a night away. We're going to go on the motorway with it and see if you are all right on the motorway on one of these. Um, we're going to do 125 miles from here to Anglesey to a place called Track Mon and do a track day. And then we're going to try and ride it back all in one tank of fuel. So let's see how we get on. Right, so get a tank of fuel I'd say that's brimmed 8.3 litres supposedly 11 litre tank. So zero miles. Filled up. Off we go. There we go. First test. Well, second test. It seems to be riding okay with all the camping gear on, so that's first test on. Can it do that on the motorway with all the camping gear on? Look at this, 59! Keep this thing singing, because it ain't going to go anywhere if it's not revving. I'm going to stick with this truck, I think. That's it, that's the end of the motorway. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the weight that this bike's having to carry. As well as obviously taking the weight of me, it's also got two pairs of RST box shorts, two pairs of RST socks, a base layer, a thermal gilet, track tech Evo 4 suit, a neck tube, two pairs of gloves, one pair of S1 boots, an all-in-one waterproof, a RIRX 7V helmet with spare visor, a tent, a sleeping bag, rucksack, panniers, a lock, camera gear, change of clothes, a wallet, and two phones. That's quite a lot for a 125. We're now on a dual carriageway. He's going for it. He's going for it. You just got ninjured. We're coming into Wales. There we go. There we go. Welcome to Wales. Oh, and now we're in a 50 limit. Here's the bridge with the dragon on it. We've made it to Wales. The last time Kawasaki had a Sports 125 was when they launched the AR125 back in 1982. With its liquid-cooled two-stroke engine, it was one of the fastest production 125s at that time. But technology and performance kept moving on. The two-stroke 125 era peaked with the likes of the Aprilia RS and Kajiva Mitos. These days, 
although the Aprilia is more horsepower and lighter, they're all also hard to find in good condition and not suited to the kind of abuse that this modern Kawasaki Ninja 125 is taking. And so with electric bikes threatening the future with 125s, this Kawasaki could very well be the pinnacle of the four-stroke 125 era. If we look at the specs of this bike in particular, it has a single cylinder double overhead cam producing just shy of 15 horsepower and retailing at £5,449 for the performance model. Comparing the standard model against its rivals, it is by far the most affordable. In fact, it costs the equivalent to 10.5 Xbox Series Xs. I'd much rather have this bike than that. asking too much for a 125? So far I'd say no. Well, this is Anglesey. So we made it last what for you two bars of fuel I think obviously it was uh, it was way over the top bar but Well, I've made it to Anglesey Circuit. Clearly that little 125 can carry the weight of some camping gear and stuff. And it was fine on the motorway as well, which was awesome. Um, all I've got to do now is a bit of a trap day and see if it can stick with the other bikes at safe speed. Most likely in like the beginner group, because it'll be going a little bit slower. Um, it's not so much the corners that'll be an issue, I don't think, because that little 125 can corner quite well. It's gonna be on the straights. Um, if they're doing 100 mile an hour plus, then the difference in speed between them and me is probably going to be a bit unsafe, but we'll see how we get on. One thing I've got to say though is I'm so glad that I had this RST um, wind blocker gilet underneath my leathers because sticking this over the top of the hoodie, like, uh, it's kept me nice and warm. And it's keeping the wind off because it's pretty windy. So I'm just getting ready to uh, to go out and do the track talk. Is it a track talk? So last night wasn't so bad. You don't get much room in a tent that you can pack onto a 125. Um, just gonna get my leathers on and get ready to go and do some laps on the track. And then it's a case of trying to get that bike packed again and get back to Manchester. Let's see how far it'll get. I've got, I'm fully expecting it to run out of fuel but um, it be interesting to see what it had done on a tank anyway. James Whittam Track Training is the UK's premium race school with great circuits like Cadwell Park, Mallory Park and Anglesey Circuit as some of their venues. Plus they use top TT and British Superbike racers for their on-track instructors. We are extremely grateful that they are going to allow us on track with the Ninja 125. But regardless of that, 
we would 100% recommend any rider with or without track experience to try out one of James's track training days for yourself and see how good it is. So I've done a track session here at uh, Anglesey Circuit with the Jamie Whittam uh, Race School. And to be honest, uh, I only just kept up with the um, sighting lap, mainly because of the straights. It's, uh, the bike's just not quick enough to do, to, to get down the straights. You've got people coming past you at like 100, 150 mile an hour, and the 125 tops out at 73, it hits the limiter. So, it's not quick enough, really, for a track day. You could go to a circuit that suits it more, so go to somewhere like um, Three Sisters Circuit up near Wigan, which hasn't got a big straight, and it's nice and tight and twisty, which is where this bike will do the best, Joe do its best, basically. Um, but yeah, hugely grateful to the Jamie Whittam Motorcycle Training School, or Race School, um, for letting us to do those couple of laps and test it out, and obviously ride here and stay overnight. Um, all I've got to do now is try and get back to Manchester and see how far this tank of fuel will get me before it cuts out. So, might do a little bit on the dual carriageway and then I'll have to cut off maybe as I, as I see it running out of fuel. Um, so, time to pack up the tent and get going.
So the original plan was to run out of fuel and see what mileage we'd done on a tank. But with the fuel light flashing and having had a police officer follow me for quite a few miles prior to this, I thought it was best just to stop somewhere safe, fill it back up and see what mileage we'd done. I'm on reserve. There's quite a bit more fuel left in there. But I've got a hill coming up. I don't know whether it's, um, I don't want to do something irresponsible and run out on a dodgy bit of road. So we've done 180 odd miles at the minute. I think I could probably push 200 miles maybe. Let's see where's our nearest petrol station. Right, so let's see how much fuel we've used. Right, so that's brimmed to the same amount. 13 quid. 13 pounds, 16p. Hundred and eighty four miles. This is now the hardest climb it's going to have to do. I'm just going to have to keep it revving, I think. Come on. This is hard for a car. Never mind a 125. Doing all right. 55 is respectable. Not very fast, but it's respectable. <laughs> Come on. You can stay at 55 up here. You're doing well, little, little blind. Come on. Let's see if you can squeeze a, a 56. Oh no, come on, not 54. Not 54. 53, I'm losing it. Drop another gear, get it revving. 52. Fifty-two, fifty-three. Come on, once you're up here, you're done. Right, that's going a lot quicker. Fifty-two, fifty-one. Come on, fifty-two. Fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, we're going, fifty-six, we're at the top. Back on the M56. That's the end of the motorway. So what we've got now is a little lay road to get back. What are we on? 239 miles. So round up on this bike 
and I'm massively surprised by it. It has been so much fun to ride. I think a bigger bike would be the perfect bike. Just a little bit bigger. You'd be able to ride it hard you know, without breaking too many speed limits. You could use pretty much all the power, which is fun. There's a lot to be said for riding a bike hard and with a lot of like litre super bikes, they're just too quick to ride them hard on the road because the speed you do, even in first gear, if you redline them in first gear, you're doing over 100 mile an hour. The, the acceleration is the fun bit, but you can't use them, use it all. And there's, there is an element of fun in using all the performance of a bike. Um, one of the, couple of the downsides to the 125, Hills, obviously, I was expecting to be a slight issue. I'm surprised how much a headwind affects the, your speed. Headwinds are a real issue, which makes me think this, this sporty kind of ninja is the one to have over something like the, the uh, Z, because the Z being a naked bike is going to get affected more by the wind. Would I have one myself? I think I would have something like a 350, 250, 350, 400. 100% I'd have one though. Would I get one of these for my, my little lad as he gets turned 17? 100%. Mainly, I think the reliability. I can't see that many cheap 125s not naming any brands or models or anything. But I can't see that many cheap 125s. First of all, pulling 73 before they hit a limiter. And secondly, um, doing 60 to 70 mile an hour for the length of time that I've done without melting something. And this has been faultless. And it did a track, a few laps on a track, which is an absolute bonus. Yeah, it's not made for track days. It's, it couldn't do a, a big track like that, realistically. It was good, really good of Jamie Whittam's race school to let me go out and do a couple of laps. But something like Three Sisters, quite a few people said the same thing. Three Sisters, it'd be a great bike because it, it's a small, tight track where the handling of this gives it an advantage um, with not too much of a straight where you lose out. And with that, it marked the end of the trip. The Kawasaki Ninja 125 had been faultless throughout, regardless of how much I put it through. And you can't help but build a connection with a bike that you have to will along to get up a hill. It was certainly a bit of a shame to see it loaded into the van and taken away.